everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels, and we're going back to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the disclaimers, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of awesome that came in the mail today. Let's check it out. Toys! Shall we? Excuse my mug. This is my new badass speaker. Go with the new badass TV. And I thought that Pink Floyd would be a wonderful way to test the new speakers. Right? Just wanted to kind of like have a little bragging moment there. All right, let's get this on pause here for a minute. All right, in the description box, folks, you're going to find a link to the article that the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center doesn't want you to read. It's written by Neuroclastic, a small non for profit started by autistics for autistics wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. Matter of fact, the JRC doesn't want you to read this article so much, they have threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so you know the drill, folks. Please read that article and don't forget to share it on all your social media. We also have linked in their no caustics public statement in regards to the defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe. We are crowdfunding folks in case the JRC has the balls to see through with their threat. We also have at least one link because we're rebuilding the archive here in the description box. It's in regards to, of course, Agape Boarding School slash now Stone for Help a so-called Christian-themed boarding school based out of Stockton, Missouri, that takes in so-called trouble male teens that has and pending. Over 21 civil lawsuits, claims, and allegations leveled against it, all which have been substantiated on the hard evidence gathered by the Missouri Department of Social Services and includes the following. Rape, sodomy, sexual assault, child abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, child trafficking, starvation, and that's just for starters. We had one former staff member arrested by the FBI, another a doctor who still lives on premises with full access to the boys, up on multiple, again, substantiated claims and allegations of sodomy, rape, and sexual assault of the boys there. We have an attorney general who has still done nothing and said nothing. And we've got a batshit insane governor hyped up on a power trip. So please share that article by Ozarks First on all your social media. We got the other pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign as well, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, the templates in the ever present self explanatory change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. A link to the behavioral sheet of shockable offenses provided by Jennifer Masumba. And a clip out of the seven-hour ordeal undergone by Andre McCollins back in 2002. Now, moving forward, when we talk about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you have young children present, please use your headphones, all right? Also, this channel is marked not for children for a reason. We use profanity and speak on dark subjects. If your child is 16 and younger and watching this, parental supervision is very obviously advised, all right? All right, trigger warning. We are about to once again for the last time today, thank God, one can only handle so much stupid in a single day. The mad ravings of the lunatic mind known as Dr. Matthew Israel. You're going to hear gaslighting victim blaming, contradictory statements, pseudoscience, lies, so many lies, mother god, so many lies, abuse apologensia, torture apologensia, enough bigotry and ableism to circle the globe a few thousand times, and also dealing with a doctor with a massive god complex and an ego so big I'm surprised he can fit inside a building. So just be, please be aware of that, all right? 
Now, we're going to the part of this as our last video where Dr. Matthew Israel is going to go ahead and channel for us a 16-year-old on Twitter. And I mean, Doctor, is there any particular reason why you feel the need to write everything in fucking caps? That's what teenagers do. You're supposed to be someone nearing their 80s. For fuck's sake. Let's get that drought of that calming tea. This would be the time where you should put this video on pause and go grab you some chamomile, something, anything. I don't drink these days because if I did, I would be like smashed off my ass by the time I ended up being done with throat loading. That's how much his level of just arrogant, stupid affects me. All right. Persons without disabilities have the right to avail themselves of aversive therapy in order to treat problematic behaviors. Oh, for fuck's sake. Doctor, what neurotypical do you know that would willfully sign themselves up? to be shocked at just below the lethal limit. Now, I know there's some sadists out there, don't get me wrong, but I highly see them signing up for this shit. Nobody likes being controlled, doctor. This is why we have things called revolutions. They tend to pop up when people like you come along who think they have the right to oppress us and then dare tell us that we're supposed to like it. Right? No one's signing up for this shit. This is, however, the very same kind of shit that spawns revolutions. Just saying. Just saying is all. If we were to deny persons with disabilities the same right, this would constitute individualist, invidious discrimination against individuals on a basis of disability. Are you on crack? Okay, so here's his argument. Well, if you take away this therapy, you are in violating, violating their rights. Uh, how the fuck do you figure, doctor? You think we want the right to be tortured? Do you drink your own Kool-Aid? No one signs up for this shit, okay? No autistic just sits there on the couch one day and be like, Gee, you know, if someone could just torture me with a shock device, you know, just a little, just so much that I don't die, but may actually permanently damage me for life, that would be wonderful. It would save my life. No one says that, doctor. No one says that. Okay? Seriously? I, I'm sorry, but this whole idea, but is your di right as a disabled person to be tortured? It's like the same people who try to sell others their oppression, right? Bullshit, isn't it? Because it is. No, doctor. It does not violate my rights as a disabled person to not be able to get tortured, okay? What you get up to in that school is a systematic, complete, and utter removal of every single individual human right that these kids have every right to be able to exercise that you strip from them. None of these kids are signing up to be treated like this, folks. Other people are doing it for them. And to sit there, well, their parents have the right Again, your parents, if you're disabled in the state of Massachusetts, have the right to sign you up for torture. Doesn't work, does it? It's because, doctor, no matter how many times you try to convince us that this is treatment, it's not. And just because you're a doctor doesn't make it treatment. Any more than the experiments that Yosef Mingala got up to could be considered treatment. Because it's not. It's torture. And insanity. Okay? Nobody's lining up for this shit.
Okay. God damn. But it's in a reasonable accommodation. How the fuck is torture in a reasonable accommodation? Let's roll this back because he said this shit before on interviews, no less. How is shocking me at just below the lethal limit? 31 times within a seven hour period. In any way, shape, or form considered by anyone to be a reasonable accommodation. Okay? Explain this to me like I'm five. It's not, doctor. Want to know what a reasonable accommodation is? Allow me, as a fellow who has worked in this field, to explain it to you in small words so your dumbass can get it. A reasonable accommodation would be a kid has super hyper hearing. Hearing is an issue. Super hyper hearing with sensory. I, I have that issue. A reasonable accommodation would be to put on that child's head noise-canceling headphones so that they would not be bothered by the never-ending hum of fluorescent lighting that haunts every single last one of our lives. Okay? That's a reasonable accommodation. I want to know another reasonable accommodation, doctor. Allow me to edumacate your dumbass, Okay? It is when a child shows behavior that is telling you that the clothes you are forcing them to wear are actually very painful or causing irritation to the point that they can't focus on anything else. To the point that being forced to wear these clothes is why they dig into their skin until they bleed. Because don't tell me it's irrational behavior, doctor. There are reasons. We do not feel things physically, emotionally, or psychologically like neurotypicals. Everything is heightened to 11. Okay? Everything that has to do with sensory is heightened to 11. Sound, taste, touch, everything. Okay? Which means what just might be slightly irritating to you can be excruciatingly painful to me. Okay, what would a reasonable accommodation be in this situation? Should you put me up to a shock voice device and shock and punish the hell and torture the hell out of me? Because you're forcing me to wear clothes that is actually making me feel physical pain? No, doctor, that's not a reasonable accommodation. Let me make it simple for you. You allow that child to go back and change into clothes. I'll even give you that you approve of because our autistic asses get some weird ideas about clothing when we're little. I, I got really fucking weird ideas when I was a kid, okay? Even I can acknowledge some of that shit was a bad fashion choice, okay? You allow that kid with maybe the per person, the parent involved to choose clothes when clothes shopping, whose materials do not cause us discomfort, that do not cause us physical pain to wear them, or adversely affect us in any way, so that when we're able to go to school and out in the community, we're not preoccupied with trying to force normal while being in physical pain. That's a reasonable accommodation, okay? Another reasonable accommodation. You have a nonverbal you would like to communicate with. You teach that person sign language. Reasonable accommodation. You provide them an electronic device that they can use or even a typing machine so that they would be able to type it out or use the pictures to communicate. None of which you do. This device is not a reasonable accommodation, not by anybody's definition, not even remotely close. To sit there and call it a reasonable accommodation, really a device that is used to punish us for existing. And you're going to sit there and say, I'll fight to your death for your right for you to have it. Fuck all the way off. All the way off. 
or as that little meme goes, hey, you there, you, you, Dr. Matthew Israel, fuck off. And when you're done fucking off from there, fuck off again. And then fuck all the way around back to us and fuck off again. Okay? It's not a reasonable accommodation. It is a torture device. None of us are signing up for this shit. The parents who drink the Kool-Aid and then the parents whom you did rip away when they begin to start actually investigating your ass and you put them on corner-pointed fucking stool pigeons that you use. Yeah. They're signing us up. We are not signing up. If this is a right you feel that we desperately need, please, like, set it on fire, okay? Throw Greek fire at it. I don't know, but that is the most stupid statement I've come across in weeks, and I have had nothing but two weeks of back-to-back -back stupid on the phones. Doctor. Doctor. I know that you know what reasonable accommodations actually are. I know that you know that what you get up to, that these devices you designed, are not, by anyone's definition whatsoever, a reasonable accommodation. Your entire argument here is completely pointless. And I'm pretty sure that every one of us who have read this argument has lost brain cells for just having to endure this special level of stupidity. Okay? So what are we getting from this last video, kids, before I get to go play with my speaker more? It's very simple. Dr. Matthew Israel is trying to gaslight us into making us believe that kids that want this should have access to it. It's this insane idea he has that if we knew how much it would benefit us, all of us would be willing to sign up. No, doctor, because we're not morons. I know you like to treat us like we are. I know the rest of the planet treats us like we are. But it's, I'm afraid it's just not true. We know the difference. By the way, we know the difference starting very fucking young. Between an actual reasonable accommodation and a megalomaniac trying to piggyback off of disability rights to get in his insanity. It's not going to work, doctor. We're going to close out on that. We don't get very many views on this channel. Those that we do, do tend to get removed from time to time. So please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this afternoon. As always, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone. Come on.